So, you've been playing this Factorio game and you've just unlocked Advanced Oil Refining. In this video, I aim to explain how to build refinery setups that get the most out of your crude in a way that is understandable and accessible to newer players. If you've seen other Factorio builds with production buildings cramped between rows of beacons to maximize performance and power, no, I will not be building anything quite that extreme. The recipes for advanced oil refining pose a challenge, but also an opportunity for designs that will hold up, as in, I still feel good about this, potentially to the end of your run. At the very least, it's an opportunity to look just far enough ahead so you don't have to wonder about how to adapt your refining setup to produce lubricant when you already have an excess of petroleum gas. Basic oil processing crudely takes our oil and gives us a singular output, petroleum gas. There's almost nothing to think about there. Need more petroleum gas? Place more refineries. Pretty simple. Now, since advanced oil processing has two inputs and three outputs, we have a lot more to contend with. Why should you care? If it weren't for two little details, yellow science requiring lubricant from heavy oil and rocket fuel requiring light oil, we could have leaned on basic oil processing forever. But the advanced recipe is also more efficient. And efficiency is practically the name of the game, so let's get cracking. Or not. Cracking heavy oil into light oil, and light oil into gas makes for a lot more gas, but we can't make lubricant out of anything other than the heavy oil that comes straight out of our refineries. If we need a lot of lubricant, we don't want to crack any heavy oil until we have extra. Oil demand starts with plastic, made from petroleum gas, which has a reasonably wide array of uses that grow in significance as the game goes on. Batteries in uranium mining take sulfuric acid, ultimately made from petroleum gas. Loose science packs even take sulfur directly. Chances are you'll end up consuming more petroleum gas than anything else as your factory grows. In the worst case, if your demand for lubricant or light oil somehow exceeds your demand for petroleum gas, you could try and dump your gas by making solid fuel with its inefficient recipe and burning that for some extra power. However, if your factory consumes primarily gas, then you can guarantee that you won't run out of lubricant or light oil by prioritizing those outputs. In that case, any shortage of oil products just means you've got to expand the oil processing that you already have. In the simplest case, we can use one refinery and one chemical plant for every step. This won't be optimal, but it should be very easy to see how each step works. To prioritize the outputs, we use some very simple logic with pumps and tanks. To my knowledge, there's nothing that consumes heavy oil that is of value to us besides lubricant and cracking it into light oil. If you want to send it to flamethrowers, I suspect it's probably more effective to crack it into light oil so that you have a deeper supply to pull from with a single pipeline. As such, I don't consider heavy oil itself to be an output of any value, so all of it will be converted into lubricant or cracked as part of refinery. Since pumps are powered one-way gates for fluid, as are the chemical plants, we have all of the pipeline isolation that we need to set up recipe prioritization very easily. The lubricant plant has access to all of the heavy oil so long as the pump is off. What we need to do is tell the pump to stay off when we need lubricant. Conversely, we only turn it on when there is enough lubricant. Enter the tank. Place one down on the lubricant side and we can pull a wire off. When the tank is full, maybe we said it to be mostly full instead, the pump should be turned on. Technically speaking, we could toggle the lubricant factory to do the inverse at the same time, but I can think of absolutely no practical reason to do that. We're not done just yet. Factorio 2.0 pipes work a little more reliably than they used to, but we can still export our product to a supply line that we can draw upon elsewhere, say a nearby train station loading buffer. This takes just one pumper output to do, and it gives us a little more certainty that our tank represents the state of the factory's satisfaction for this product. If there's any space out there, this pump will try to push lubricant to it, and our tank will effectively say, there's still some demand for lubricant, don't crack heavy oil yet. Now that we know that heavy oil cracking is only happening when it's supposed to, we can join that extra output up with the light oil output from the refinery. We have the same process here, but without the extra chemical plant step. Plop down a tank and cracking pump, set our threshold, put another pump to export light oil as a product, and we're done. Petroleum gas is even easier. So long as there is space for gas, the refinery will produce more of it. If there is demand for only gas, all of the products will be cracked into gas for maximum production. All we need to do is export it, really. That's all it takes to prioritize the outputs for a refinery so that it can produce a varied ratio of outputs depending on your needs in most normal circumstances. Now, the single refinery unit is not a reasonable late game design. For that, we will want to think about input-output ratios. First, let's talk a little bit about beacons, because they can change the ratios. Why would we want that? 
Before Factorio 2.0 added diminishing returns to beacons, there was but a simple truth. The math decreed that productivity modules and buildings and speed modules and as many beacons as you could possibly cram into the area was most optimal. Especially for UPS because of, ironically, the simplicity of simulating a relatively small number of buildings that perform a relatively large amount of work. In all practicality, this does come with the downside of necessarily building a large and powerful refinery supported by a large and powerful s power supply somewhere. Which could still be UPS efficient if you're inclined to build that big anyways. This video isn't really meant for anyone looking to build a mega factory, though all you'd have to do is scale things up far enough to get one. The principles still hold. With productivity modules in the buildings, speed modules in the beacons actually reduce the power consumed to produce each item because while the power cost per unit of time increases, the time spent on each production operation decreases a little more. My own preference has been to use a limited number of speed module beacons to make up for the productivity module penalties. Most of my blueprint units, such as this refinery here, focus on giving each building the boost of just one beacon. Even before Factorio 2.0, Speed module beacon boosts had similar diminishing returns on power save per operation. As it happens, the 2.0 update means that the first beacon provides three times as much of a boost as it used to with no diminishing returns yet. I definitely consider this a win for my preferred designs. Beacons come with a constant power draw whether or not the production buildings are running, after all. Okay, enough about beacons, mostly. All this is to say that the option exists to make fast and resource efficient layouts that cost less energy per output than you might first expect. So, how do we future-proof the design? There are three things to plan ahead for. One, how the input-output ratios will change if you opt to use productivity modules. Two, the placement of the building so that you can fit in a beacon later if you choose to. Three, we can build these refinery groups so that they chin together nicely. If we need more later, we could build on more units that take almost no effort to hook up. That's for Factorio 2.0. Space players could take into account productivity module quality, but at some point I will just make a new layout. My example will use Speed 3 and Productivity 3 modules. Before I even start with this next example, let me just note that when I want to truly optimize or mini minimize a layout, I might have to take an idea and rebuild it several times. Don't worry if the first attempt has production flaws or the second attempt seems to sprawl. Redesigning a layout at least two or three times just to make what you imagined the first time is probably more normal than you'd expect. So let's take a look at the layout I came up with the last time I tried to design one. Sometimes you weren't going to be able to boost every building with the right number of beacons if you build it in one cluster. With the pipes especially, this build just wouldn't be possible without two beacons. Be careful about overlapping your beacons, though. You could on purpose if you're prepared to do the math. To handle the ratios, we have to find out what each step consumes and produces over a common unit of time, like per second. We can either divide the initial recipe input or output quantity by the crafting time and multiply it by the ratio of production that we calculate as a result of the modules, or we can divide the crafting time by the crafting speed and divide the recipe quantity by the new crafting time. I think the first one is easier to keep up with, and that's what will be on screen. Lubricant production takes 10 heavy oil per second normally, or 20.5 per second with our modules. Since we have nearly 40 heavy oil per second being produced by the refineries, two chemical plants and a capacity of 41 per second is actually a very good, yet not quite perfect ratio. Since one cracking recipe can already handle more than the amount of heavy oil we produce with three refineries, obviously we only need one chemical plant for that step. We'll tally up all the maximum water consumption by the whole layout in a moment. For light oil cracking, we need to add up the light oil being produced by the refineries and the light oil that could be produced by heavy oil cracking. Then figure out how many chemical plants we would need to deal with the maximum production rate. That's roughly 112 per second, though since the heavy oil technically doesn't run all the time, it's more like 111 per second. It won't make much difference here because we need about 3.6 chemical plants to handle all of the possible light oil cracking. That means, in this case, four actual chemical plants are required to handle the maximum production of the petroleum grass when we crack all of the possible heavy and light oil. That's almost all of the math. We do need to know how much water to pump in. All summed up, it's just over 200 water per second at maximum consumption. Pre 2.0, my rule of thumb for fluids was that you can transport a little over 1000 per second in a pipeline pretty far between pumps. So here we could get about five of these units on a single water line supplied by a single offshore pump. Post 2.0, a functional water pipeline is simply good for 1200 per second. 
Blasto shows that a six refinery unit could incur water starvation, knowing that water starvation would only incur when the maximum rate of petroleum gas is the only product being consumed, which is very unlikely to be true for extended periods of time, suggests that it probably would be worth putting a six refinery on the line in practice. Hurrah! Now that we know what to build, we just have to, you know, build it. With this layout, you can see that the two beacons hit every building once. The bottom of the layout has the input lines, built with underground pipes ready to connect to a supply line or an adjacent unit. For some reason, I linked all of the product outputs as well, with each line ready to link to adjacent units. I can't think of a significant bonus from doing it this way, so that feature is optional. Keep in mind that the refineries within a unit do need to link to each other as still. You can see that I pulled a water line up the middle, and the top row of light oil cracking is actually facing downwards. Then, every output has its tank, with both cracking recipes gated by a pump. None of this is pushed to a supply line in this blueprint, not exactly. But you can see that the tanks have pipes ready to link to some underground pipes leading away without merging outputs. Now look what happens when I place another one adjacent to this one. At their closest position, you can see the power lines hooking up. None of the streams are crossing, but the input line is connecting. Since the outputs are expected to go upwards, we can build pipelines for those across the top that should work for all of the connected units. One of these units produces about 10 times as much as the single refinery example and consumes only 6 times the crew. And these units chain together, making a modular design like this really easy and fun to work with. In fact, I noticed that the factory on this map is running a little dry on petroleum gas, so as soon as I'm done recording, I'm going to try and put a 6 refinery unit on that line. The number of beacons and refineries truly are variable, while I prefer the speed plus productivity combination for space and resource efficiency, crude is ironically infinite. There's a case to be made for leaning on efficiency modules instead if you have plenty of crude to work with. Regardless of your preferences, I hope this video has been helpful. See ya!